Okay, this is going to be part one of this new build. I wanted to use a, a single TT gear motor to not only provide a walking and arm motion, but I also wanted to do an extended gun barrel from the chest with opening and closing doors. And I uh, wanted to run all that off one motor without adding any electronics to, to do any of that stuff. So, let's see. I'm going to run it first so we can get a rough idea of what it is we're talking about. I got the batteries sitting up here, just running up two pen light batteries. <clears throat> right now, that's the uh, 120 to 1 or 1 to 120 gear ratio motor. I didn't have any of the uh, 220 ratios left. I have some on order. And when they get here, we'll try one in there. So this is walking faster than I want and uh, firing the gun faster than I want. Uh, basically, there's going to be this cam that comes around here that pushes on this, which not only pushes this whole part out, these are going to be levers for opening doors in the front, but it also causes the uh, gun barrel to then tip up. So that's what you're going to be seeing happening here. And there's a clicker on the other side. Let's see if I can uh, leave this connected and handheld this thing. No. The alligator clip does not want to stay on by itself. Let's try it again. Okay. So over on this side, see an alligator clip fell off again already. Over on this side I have the uh, clicker. Let's uh, finish that movement. <clears throat> so basically I think you can see in there there's this gear right here and the clicker is attached to this gun part coming down and it's not engaged with the gear at the moment. Does that show up? About there I think. But you can see as this moves forward that's going to put that clicker into those gear teeth and that's what causes the clicking and will cause this uh, to wiggle with the clicks and uh, to light up the LED in the end of the gun barrel, I couldn't really run wires out because there's so much movement on this little plate that no matter how I did it, something's going to bind up and get in the way. So what I ended up doing is taking one of the LED wires and just bending it up flat right here and then putting another wire up here. This is what's going to form the switch to turn the LED on because then I can then supply power to that wire from the back right there, in this case it's the negative wire. So when these, when this comes up, those two touch. And that's what will turn the light on, and as this shakes, that'll make the light flash off and on. Then to get power to the other side of the LED, I bent its legs down and folded them up in like a compression spring to touch that uh, paper clip that I'm using as an axle down there, which comes around here, pokes it through. That's my positive wire. So I just brought the negative and positive wires uh, up to the motor. And that's how I'm getting power up to that. This uh, linkage right here, that's just the bent paper clip which uh, forms the linkage to make the, uh, the gun extend. A lot of the more basic vintage robots that had guns came out would have just attached the guns right here, kind of angled up, so that when they're all the way forward then they'd been looking like that. But I decided to add the second feature because then I not only get the advantage of that tip moving it forward, but I can add the whole length uh, of what should fit within the door opening that I plan uh, to build. And like I say, these are to bump the doors. That's what moves the doors open and the springs will cause the doors to close. Now as far as the walking goes, I've got the standard cam kind of buried down in there on each side 180 degrees out of phase with each other so that the, the legs will do that and of course these pins will be for moving the arms and like I said earlier this uh, small gear on the TT motor drives this larger gear to gear it down and then this cam which is part of this larger gear and I painted that silver just so it would show up better as it rotates around pushes on this to cause that when it reaches the very end, the straight edge there, that's when it will drop back close. So let's 
I'll try and hold this on the uh, battery connection and let you watch that function. Alligator clips are never the best way to do things, right? If they don't short together there, then they fall off the wire somewhere else. But what are you going to do? So like I say, um, once... Uh, I don't know why that ratchet's not grabbing. Huh? It's grabbing with my hand, so it must have been slipping on the tabletop. Standard uh, ratchets on the bottom of the feet. There is a, uh, a torsion spring here, which pushes this back. Let's get this where I can move it manually. So to make it want to close again, you can see that's there and that's there. Just kind of wound that out of some uh, uh, 0 0.2 millimeter wire. You can actually find and buy torsion springs on uh, Amazon. I didn't... Well, actually, I think I got these off eBay. I'm sure you can get them on Amazon, too. But... Uh, using a spring to make sure that that'll want to return and again just a paper clip axle holding that lower part in place and I got my standard three millimeters there you can see this is basically like the uh, the Pogot bottom half but reversed around on the Pogots this is the front where I had all the different face plates so I flipped things around and when I flipped them around I had to make changes to the legs um, had to make some changes to the feet bottom leg to feet top stayed the same so I made some changes there made some changes to this uh, mounting frame that this is all going on so that I could add this tip function part and uh, like I say in the next video it'll either be depending when they get here running the same thing but with the uh, 1 by 220 gear ratio motor in there just so we can see what the speeds like and how it works uh, or if that doesn't get here by the time I uh, have moved ahead enough it will be with the uh, body with the moving arms and hopefully the uh, opening and closing doors to reveal the uh, the gun function